Good morning, students, or good afternoon, as the case may be. Today, we're going to be learning how to blend, or we're going to do some more practice with that anyway. I'm in my garage here, aka my art studio. It's a little cold out here, it's springtime, so I'm wearing my hat. Anyway, each of you are going to have one of these in a second. Please remember to put your name on it so when you turn it in you can get credit for it and <clears throat> there's sort of a little gradient here I've purposely printed that lightly as just a guide for you to follow but the idea here is we're going to try to blend from one color to the next as smoothly as possible a gradient is a smooth gradual transition from one thing to the next in this case from one color to the next so I've got my palette here this is an old lunch tray. It's kind of what I use as a huge palette. Never wash it off, as you can see. Don't forget that a palette, <clears throat> a little vocab hint, is also a range of colors or a range of flavors or a range of anything. There's more than one definition there. So this painting here that I'm working on is a self-portrait. It's kind of like a me painting me painting me sort of thing. And I get progressively more abstract as it goes along. Um, this would have kind of a complementary palette because I'm using some colors that are opposite on the color wheel like red and green or violet and yellow. <clears throat> complementary again being one of your vocab words on the test. Okay, so we are going to do a little blending practice. I'm going to aim the camera down here so hopefully you can sort of see what's going on here and I'm going to pick up a little bit of red um, before I get started though I should say <clears throat> another tip is I never paint without having a little piece of scrap paper near me that just allows me to just kinda see what my paintbrush is gonna do quick before I actually put it on my canvas or the, the thing I'm actually painting on it's useful the other thing I always have nearby is a paper towel or maybe a smock to wipe or clean my brush on. The the, uh, the aprons or smocks are pretty useful for that. So I'm going to start with red. This is going to be kind of a this little gradient or blending practice exercise is going to have. I'm getting a little bit of water to thin my paint there to make it a little smoother. Um, th this little practice exercise is going to have kind of a warm palette. So maybe an inch or so I'm just going to start with just plain old red and then I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow here. You don't need a lot of paint, maybe a dime size amount of each of the colors. And if you're using combination like this, the red tends to be stronger. So you'll mix more of the yellow probably than the red if you're trying to get kind of something that looks like a middle orange. Now the key here is we want to mix these colors into each other uh, along the edges while they're still wet. If they dry, you're just going to kind of have these stripes occur. And I'm going to progressively add a little bit more yellow as I go along. So maybe when you get to about here, we have a, still an orange, but a more yellowy orange. And then some more yellow still. And sometimes I might even just put the yellow right onto my little blending sample here um, because we're getting closer to the yellow side and I can push this a little further. Right now I feel like I have a little too much orange on my brush so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it off. Often I will just do that instead of picking up another brush and then I don't want it to be too wet and soupy but also not too dry so paper toweling it off a little bit can kind of get the right consistency. Right now before I pick up more yellow I'm gonna come back through with a clean brush and this right here kids is the, uh, probably the crux or the most important thing to recall from this little lesson. A clean brush will allow you to kind of feather between these colors and smooth the transition. You see here where there's kind of a line going. Um, I'm not going to be painting more of one color or the other here. I'm just sort of using the brush to tickle or feather between the uh, the the, val the values or in this case the actual hues right because we're not really going from light to dark we're going from red to yellow so let's go ahead and introduce a little more yellow here on this end of the spectrum 
I've got a little line there. I'll come back and feather that again. At this point, I'm close to the end where I just want plain yellow. So I'm, I've still got some orange here. Maybe I can feather some of this line out like so. Not pressing very hard. I also find if you if you use a brush like this, it's a little springier. You can kind of see how this is. Um, it's got a little bit of spring to it. It's not all floppy. Um, I think you'll have a better time blending with it. Okay, this is called a shader style brush, and it's it's good for this purpose. So I'm rinsing my brush once more. I'm just gonna use the last of my kind of dime size amount of yellow and just kind of fill in this end. So at this point we're pretty much all the way to color number two. And then I'm gonna pull some of that yellow a little bit transparent here, translucent if you will. Uh, so I'm gonna pull some of that yellow into the, the orange here to kind of smooth that transition. So when you're done, the thing should look something like that. It could probably smooth that out a little bit more, so I might come back in with some orange and try to uh, make it look a little bit better than that. But that's the idea. Um, if you want to get a four on it, it should look at least as smooth as that. That's all there is to it, guys. Give it a try.